Hi YouTube, I'm here to talk about public key encryption and how it works for encrypted emails. I've been trying to get a lot of people to use encrypted email because I think it's important, but the biggest questions I get are, well, how does it work and why should I do it? So this is a quick primer. Let's get started. Well, first of all, why should we encrypt our email? Email actually is not a very secure medium. Uh, similar to the way a postcard can be read by people along, along the, the, the route, uh, the same thing happens with email. Your ISP, like if you use Gmail, Google can read your email, uh, or Yahoo can read your Yahoo email. Uh, the government um, can read it if there's a warrant, and in some cases, without using a warrant, they can get their hands on your email. Um, if you use a lot of public Wi-Fi, uh, or even certain unsecure Wi-Fi routers, uh, people can snoop your connection and actually read your email that gets to you. Um, and the other thing is it's actually it's trivially easy to actually fake a return address and send a forged email that looks like it's from someone else. And that's a big problem with the with the internet right now. So I think encryption, email encryption is a way to help combat that problem. So um, when you encrypt an email, it's you now in modern technology uses very high uh, high powered encryption, like a four a four thousand ninety six bit encryption key actually could take centuries for uh, supercomputers or millions of years for a, a typical PC to to break. In fact, it's so important that the uh, the NSA, National Security Agency for the U.S. government, recommends that the entire government use encrypted email. Um, the U.S. government routinely recommends 256-bit AES encryption for all top secret files internally. So the way public key encryption works is that you give you, you get two keys. One is a public key and one's a private key. So the public key is published for the world to see. It's kind of a, um, a, co a key that you can give out to whoever you want. And you can use it to one-way encrypt emails and verify signed emails. I'll get to that in a second. And this one, public key, you can put online, you can put on your, on your Facebook page, you can publish in a directory, and a lot of people do that. The other one is the private key. So the private key, you keep it for yourself. You don't give this copy out. This is your copy you must keep safe and secure on your computer. Uh, this one can be used to decrypt emails and can also sign regular emails to prove that it's from you. So let me actually give an example of how you encrypt an email. So let's take a, you compose a regular email. And then you use your private key uh, I'm sorry, use the recipient's public key, the person you're sending the email to. If you have their public key, you will use the encryption program and it will convert the plain email to uh, an encrypted one like you see right here. And then you send the email. So now the person who receives this email will actually receive it in this encrypted text. So anyone along the way who sees the email you just sent will not be able to decode it. It's in this very dense encrypted code. And this could be a this could be pages and pages of this illeg illegible gibberish, really. So, but the person who gets the email has a private key, which can be used to decrypt the email. So once you run it through, you get the clear text again. So this is an end-to-end -end encryption, so that once you type it in your computer and hit send, it'll encrypt, go through the internet in code, and then when you re the person receives it, it gets decoded. So from both ends, end-to-end, -end, it's secure. There's nothing along the way that can interrupt this. Um, the other cool aspect of, private, of encryption is that you can actually sign emails. And your private key, so, can generate a signature for an email using the person's master password. So the way it does, this, the way this works actually is, um, you can it, you can verify that the email is unaltered because when I send an email with my signature on it, it has my email and at the bottom a signature key, which is a long digit of a, str a string. And if someone had altered my email, taken something out, or put something into it. The, the signature would not add up to the uh, rest of the email, and it would give you an error message. So you can actually tell that someone's tampered with your email. Also, to make sure, this actually shows this is from the actual sender, because only the private key can generate a signature. 
you have to have the, per the original private key with the password to actually generate a one-time signature that your email program can decrypt. So it shows that this email that you received is actually from the recipient, from, from the sender like me, and it's not a forgery because the person had to put their actual password in to send it. And usually people use more secure passwords than their original uh, login password. So there's actually two standards out there for email. Uh, PGP is the older one. It's called Pretty Good Privacy, and it was uh, the original standard for sending encrypted email. Uh, but it's a bit older, and it required a lot of plugins because a lot of people didn't build it into their email programs. There was a lot of different competing standards out there, and so that brought the new one out, SMIME. SMIME is the new email standard. Uh, secure multi-purpose internet mail extensions. It is uh, an open standard, which means the internet uses it on, on all platforms and apps. Uh, it's built into most email clients, meaning like if you use the OS X mail app or Microsoft Outlook or Blackberry or iPhone or even Android, you can actually use it natively with these programs. And also it's very corporate friendly, which means a lot of, people, a lot of corporate direct business directories will incorporate SMIME into their email infrastructure, meaning if you start sending and receiving emails on the corporate email network, uh, people, the Outlook server, whoever, whatever you use for your corporate email should automatically detect that both of you have uh, SMIME and encrypt the email from end to end, which is very helpful and um, very popular in this day and age. Okay, uh, so how do you actually get SMIME? Well, you can g actually generate your own key pair from your computer, which a lot of people do, but it's a little technical and it's um, it's a little it's a little tricky to do because it's not a very user friendly experience unless you're familiar with a lot of the different options to pick from. Um, pl uh, but the more important, more popular ones, you get a certificate authority. Every time you go to a website that has the little padlock in the corner. Um, usually these are from a certificate authority like VeriSign to prove this is an actual website and not some forged one. So these certificate authorities also grant SMIME keys for encrypted email. So if someone gets an email from you with that key, you can more or less verify that the, this is from the, from the person who they say they are. It's not a forged key. It's an actual key that's usually from a trusted source. There's, um, there's free ones that show, okay, it came from this email address. Or there's paid ones that's real name attached to it, and a uh, much higher level of encryption, and you, they're more easy, uh, more trustworthy, so to say. A lot of um, if you actually are in a corporate business in a corporate environment, you may want to ask your corporate IT department um, to give you what, because often Outlook server and certain Lotus server and certain other email uh, network system, email systems for for corporations uh, often generate their own. Internally, and some, a lot of IT departments might be able to set you up, set it up for you. So, in the next install, I'm going to actually show how to do it on the Mac and on the PC. I'm going to have different screencasts to show how to set it up for for maybe for Mac, for PC, and probably iPhone. All right, take care.